Hey everybody, it's Toronto Unicorn. I am here with a very special and I'm like super starstruck guest. This is Matt and Bianca from Club Sapphire. It is a YouTube channel that is basically an OG of the lifestyle. <laughs> they were unblurred on YouTube way before I even considered it. So uh, I consider them pioneers and I'll tell you why. When I was brand new to the idea of like alternative sex, meaning non-vanilla sex life, I was Googling, didn't even know what to Google. And I came across this very busty blonde and this <laughs> gentleman beside her. And they were talking so openly about how that they were in this, they were at this sex club and like, you never got to see the sex behind them, but you always hoped the camera would like, you know, <laughs> somebody would accidentally walk in front of you guys are always good about that. And it was when I actually heard you guys talk about what it was like when you guys shared each other, because you guys are, I think, a full swap couple, right? right. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember examining uh, Matt's face because I was looking for a hint of, is he just saying he likes this or does he actually like this? And I remember studying you like an anthropologist almost. And it was when I realized that you do enjoy it. You do share in each other's variety and experiences. And I could read that off you. And that's what made me realize that, yep, there are people out there just think that things about sex like I do. And that gave me a reason to go look for it. And so that is now how I became a unicorn. I ended up having a bunch of swinger sex because of you guys. <laughs> and now I feel like we're coming full circle because now I have a channel where I try to teach others how to get into this lifestyle as well. So that's why you're here. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Absolutely. For this, this, is, this is awesome. Yeah. The, the infamous Toronto unicorn. We've heard <laughs> so much about you. You've, and you've, we're, I'm hunting you guys. Like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> but, well, thank you for the kind words. You know, we, we, we love to hear stories like that. Because when we got into the lifestyle, so we've actually been in it now for 11 years. Right. And uh, when we got into it, there was really no information out there. Even though the internet's a big place, what we could find online were things like, you know, don't talk about your kids, don't talk about your family, don't, don't talk, talk about, about your job, that. don't talk about anything. And Nothing so, we, personal. And so we'd, we, we'd go to events when we first started out, we're like, I, I just don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. And they're just, it was all very old antiquated information. You go to a swinger club, there's key parties. It's going to be everybody wearing gold chains and porn stashes. And, yeah. and, uh, and it was so, so incorrect. So we started to go to these events and then we, we pretty quickly started to say, Hey, let's create a, an avenue for other people who might want to join this world just to see that it's actually a pretty normal thing. And uh, we, you know, we started making videos and they were super cheesy. We we're like oh, sitting in our bed, you know, like recorded on an old <laughs> iPad and, and, and we, but we, but we just started to tell our story and uh, it was nice to say hey you know i like to play with other people my wife likes to play with other people these are the problems that we're running into these are the problems that other people have run into these are you know some funny story or dangerous thing that happened or something that people should know about but more than anything uh just to show people that this is this is it's it's okay it's okay it's not there's nothing secret about it i mean er, er, so many people hide this from the world but uh when they get into it they start to realize that it's really really common and so we just like to just like to share where we've been and i mean 10 years that's that's a long time in this lifestyle i've only been here for three years and i feel i'm teaching you know what i'm saying so <laughs> 10 years you know, you're going to retire off the knowledge base you've left for the others to build upon, you know, almost. Um, except that's the thing with this lifestyle is it really doesn't, you don't max out on an age. You can't, you don't really max out unless, because even you could stay as a voyeur, even if you, for some reason, can't participate anymore, you can still be in the lifestyle as a voyeur. And that's what I really like about it is you can, you don't really age out, you know, you might get less opportunities as you get up there. But I think that that's just the nature of life. But there's still, everybody's still welcome and invited. And I really love that about this, this lifestyle. Well, that's the, the one thing that we really talk about. In fact, we mention it all the time uh, on our channel and just in person is that if we just out of nowhere decided tomorrow that we were going to be monogamous, we're done with swinging. We are done with this. We would still go to the club. We would still hang out with these people. They would still be our best friends, even if we never did anything else ever again with them, because 
lifestyle people are the best people. There's no question about that. Once we got into this and we started to make friends and we, we were allowed to be open and we were allowed to just talk about whatever we wanted to. Uh, you know, someone can talk about my wife's boobs and that's perfectly fine. I'd compliment her as well. <laughs> It'd go back and forth, all that. And it's perfectly fine where you can't really do that in the vanilla world. And it's been so freeing and so opening to, to, to us to just kind of let it all out and uh, that we we're okay with that. That's uh, it's, it's something that we kind of talk about that sex is almost like the secondary part of the lifestyle. Right. Like, you know, you first get into it and you're like, I want to have sex with all the people, but after you're doing it for a little while, you're like, wow, it's actually more about the social aspect yeah. and connecting with people on so many different levels that you just want to, you just want to be friends with everybody. Right. I mean, you can, any level you want it's your journey if you don't want to have friends and you want to just keep it like you know just the fucking that's fine too but yeah. we prefer to be able to make friends and create lasting relationships with them whether we have sex with them or not it's true and it's funny that you mentioned that too because the best thing i ever found out of a sex club is, is some platonic best friends mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you know we have several really good like great best friends that we've never never yeah. had sex with and and you know whether it happens or not someday maybe but mm -hmm. you know it's not something that we're like you know we're not going to talk stop talking to them because <laughs> yeah we haven't had sex with them and we don't want them to stop talking to us you know yeah so. and and it, it, what we've so we go on a lot of like lifestyle cruises we do a lot of things and on our different channels that we have we'll talk about those types of uh trips that we go on but like we've we've been on cruises for example some of the big lifestyle cruises that'll have mm -hmm four or five, 6,000 people on them. And we'll, we've run into people that are in their seventies and eighties and uh, they're not, they're not playing anymore to the extent of what you, to what we would consider, you know, <laughs> hardcore orgy with 50 people. Um, but uh, like we were actually on one a couple of years ago and this, it was the greatest thing like this, the guy must've been high seventies and he comes up to us with his wife and he says, Oh my gosh, you're Matt and Bianca. We watched your videos. We, and we, 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 we went on this trip because of you guys, we got in lifestyle because of you guys. And last night was the first time in 40 some odd years that I had sex with someone other than my wife. And we have another date tonight. And, and the, the guy, had the biggest smile on his face you can't even imagine the wife had she's like oh my god my husband and they, and they were so excited and it was like the best feeling in the world that we can share this just this weird part of our life yeah. uh, with other people and, I, and i'm sure you feel the exact same way that it's just like when you hear the positive feedback of people going wow this is this is a really great way to live uh yeah. and it's so freeing and, and and it just it just feels good it, 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 even though the, the sex is, like I said, it's secondary. It's, it's, it's amazing. Well, and the thing yeah. too is if you're making friends, you guys are going to age together, right? <laughs> so yeah. you're not going to necessarily, you might age out from meeting new people, but you make those friendships, then you can just fuck them forever. That's right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. That's actually a really good point. Um, it's funny. I've met some of the best friends with benefits, friends in this lifestyle, that people that after they sleep with me, if they go and sleep somebody with else, I'll cheer them on. I have never felt that way in vanilla world because it was always a threat when someone would sleep with someone else. In this lifestyle, it's, it's slowly for people, maybe not quickly, can start to reduce some of that feeling of threat that sex used to bring when you were in the vanilla world. And I guess I, my question for you is I'm only three years in and I'm feeling a little free. Okay. Like I'm showing my face around people call me brave. I'm like brave. Like it's just, I want people to know that this is real so that they can do it themselves. Yeah. Uh, but I want to know after 10 years, you've got to have the most in, like incredible wisdom to share for anybody who thinks, is there a longevity in this lifestyle? I remember watching your video um, just earlier today about do couples actually like each other as orange they scream because they just want to fuck other people. Great questions. People have these questions. And I am so thrilled that there's another channel that now I can even link to on my channel for people to cover other topics that maybe I don't cover. And you cover it from your couple perspective. You're yeah. going to be Talk to those things about what it's like to like hot are you guys hot wife is that part of your your um your part? not really um uh, but uh yeah i mean we you know we're we're, we're it's funny because we we consider ourselves even though we're having sex with lots of people and we do orgies and things we consider the sex part pretty vanilla so uh, uh, as far as as far as the connections that we make with others uh, and uh, and so, um, you know, we, 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 we try everything we, we've we've tried everything probably once uh, and some things we like better than others and some things that we focus on more than others. Uh, we do if if you if you don't know us at all, we, we uh, uh, do uh, full swap. Uh, we do separate room. Uh, we have dabbled in the polyamorous world. Uh, we've kind of run the gamut of all uh, of all the all the lifestyle things. So. <laughs> and because you've covered so much of the landscape, 
Is there anything that rises to the top of wisdom? Anything that you knew was a tell to tell, figure out if something is for you, is, is it not for you? That kind of stuff. Okay. So the, the biggest thing that we tell every single couple and the only way, the only way that you can be successful with this crazy world that we, that we, we've created uh, is if you, if you are really, really good at communication, not just, oh yeah, my wife and I talk a little bit. It's, it's like, you have to, you have to communicate like you've never done it before. So when we are going to a party, uh, we, or whatever it might be, we're going on a date with another couple or we're going to meet a unicorn or going to an yeah. event, whatever it might be. Uh, we'll talk about it before. And we'll be like, you know, what are our expectations? What should we be, you know, on the lookout for? What red flags should we be on the lookout for? All of those types of things. And this communication could even be, I'm not really feeling up to this, you know, like I, I might be feeling something, some sort of emotion and I don't want any separate room tonight mm -hmm. or, you know, I want to just be a little all over the place. You go do your thing. I'll go do mine. So it can be, you know, whatever kind of type of setup that you're looking for, for that event. Right. And then when the event is, it, when it's happening and also when it's over, talk about everything, not only the good stuff and not, you know, a lot of people will tend to tiptoe over the negative things and they'll not bring them up because they think the spouse might get actually upset and not want to do this anymore. And it's like, no, the negative things, oh, the guy touched me inappropriately without asking, or the, uh, she, she, she was, you know, just all over me too much, or she was connecting almost too, too much or, or what all the it? negative things that can happen. And, and those are the things it's like, okay, so this happened. One of us or both of us feels bad about the situation. What could have been done differently so that this does not happen again? And that next time we can come out going, yeah, woohoo, and high-fiving each other like we oftentimes do uh, because we had such a great experience. So, you know, communication. But building upon communication and how important that is, I also feel like active and kind-hearted listening is also part of that. That's not something that's discussed as much in that you can talk all you want, but if your partner is not listening to you or is having a reaction that is not kind-hearted, that can make you not want to communicate as much. That can make, that can kind of stop the process. Mm -hmm. um, and just listening to your partner and trying to figure it out, listening with like an open heart and just absorbing it, figuring it out and then figuring out if it was a problem, what went wrong and how can we fix it together and how can we improve upon our next experience? And, and the build off of that, the, you know, we do talk about also uh, when you, when you have two people, which is more often the case, you have husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it might be uh, that you want to go to the speed of the slower person. So mm -hmm. if we're going to a club and we're brand new and we're like, yeah, we're going to fuck all the people and I'm ready to go. And she's a little nervous and is like, well, okay, I'll go with you and I'll do these things. But there's a lot more trepidation from her standpoint. And then she says to me, you know what? I just want to play with you tonight, Matt. And I don't want to play with other people because I'm not feeling comfortable or whatever it might be that I have to go. Okay. Absolutely. On the inside, I might be like, Oh man, I really wanted to do this thing, but it's more important than anything is our relationship. Yeah. And if something that something as big as this gets in the way uh, it can cause real, real problems, which is what goes back to communication and saying where I, in that situation that I am just like you, anything you want, honey, we're doing this together. This is, this is us on our journey but and I'm going to, and meaning that and, but going yeah. with the slowest person. And then she might feel a little bit more comfortable a little later in the evening or the next time or next week or month or never. And that's also okay because yeah. you've got to do something. Yeah. Whatever like, that might be. Don't hold your feelings against the other person mm -hmm. if they're going at a slower pace don't yeah. get angry with them because they're not going at the pace that you're ready for mm -hmm. because that's just going to make everything go backwards or, or create more issues but it does bring me to a topic of what if one partner does want something out of this lifestyle that the other does not and it feels like it's a boundary but like do you think there's there's room there is, is, is it gonna is it doomed uh, i don't think it's doomed it, it just boils down to how willing and accepting both partners are to come to some sort of either agreement or compromise. So if, uh, uh, you know, if she was absolutely adamant, Matt, you are not allowed to do this. I have to accept that. Um, if I, if, if, but 
if we're like, okay, we're going to do this other thing that's not as big as that, you know, that that is still outside of the realm of uh, normality, I guess. I mean, we we talk to couples that are like, you know, especially when they're new, that will have rules like um, uh, she's allowed to play with another guy, but I'm not allowed to play with another girl. And that's a rule. And it's it's a, it's an unfortunate one in those situations, not because sometimes people want that but when it comes down to it more often than not it's a it's a jealousy issue or a comfort level of one of those two people and the other person just has to be like okay well that's so you're getting more fun than i'm getting and and, but if i'm okay with that then that's perfectly fine if if i'm really okay with that if i'm holding back and i'm almost taking one for the team in the sense it's like well i'm not getting what i want i don't get to have sex with other people but she does then i'm going to start to hold a little bit of contempt towards her and that will just grow and grow and build and that could cause real problems as well so as long as we're communicating and saying okay well you know how about uh, you get to do this thing once and then you know if, if, mm-hmm. if we're feel comfortable next time i do this other thing and you know kind of go back and forth and just tiptoe and go and, and grow from there because when we first started we had like massive rules we're like right. where we see on you know, same room only don't take one for the team don't leave another person standing da, 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 da. and and as we grew and evolved over the last over decade that we've that we've you know our rules have changed our ex- expectations have changed and it, it just boils down to us just just talking a lot I mean we just talk a lot about what hurts and what feels good and what feels bad and what could be done differently or what we don't want to do anymore or what we want to do next or what our goals are uh and and just all of those things we just spit it out all the time and it ends up being like Fine, because we'll, we'll run into those situations where she's like, Matt, I don't feel comfortable with you doing this or or she won't feel comfortable doing something. Uh, and I go, OK, well, let's figure out something else to do that you will feel comfortable. Yeah, I mean, even having done this for as many years as we have, we still run into issues. We mm-hmm. still run into things where we have to correct each other or, you know, find a solution to an issue that came up. So it's not it's like so it just just speed bumps. It. It, don't just yeah. get over it and then you're fine. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to say I've already learned something. I thought the decision about full swap, full swap, soft swap, same room, separate room was like a permanent almost decision. But it sounds like for for a couple to have good communication that that can actually change depending on maybe if you had a fight earlier in the day. Maybe you don't actually want to see your partner go off with somebody else that night. Maybe you want to keep it more close. So it's really interesting that I didn't realize that you could actually bend and flow with where your relationship is at the moment even. And I think that's really good to learn. Yeah, the, the only thing we oftentimes say is we don't recommend changing rules halfway through. Like mid, you're in the middle of an orgy and you're like, you know what, I want to do this thing instead, but I didn't talk to my spouse about it. And I'm sure she's going to be fine with it. The odds are she's not going to be fine with it. Uh, so well, that's kind of like a sneaky behind the back changing well, the rules. Even, I mean, I yeah. use the um, uh, example of there was one party we were at, there was a single guy there, but he was married. Um, he just was there without her because she was not feeling well. And Matt said, hey, if you want to go play with him, go for it. And this was early on when that was not our, our rule was you don't leave someone standing alone at a party. And um, we hadn't really played separately a whole lot. But he was saying he's totally comfortable with it. And mm-hmm. I chose not to go do it because I said, <laughs> I don't want to deal with the aftermath. <laughs> Even though there probably wasn't you know, going to be an aftermath because maybe, it was my idea. Right, it but, still boiled down to the fact that we didn't talk about it in length right. before the party. Hey, yeah. if this happens to come up, if this this couple you know comes up to us or we see them or whatever, I would feel comfortable doing this thing. Right. Uh, and and it, it probably would have been perfectly fine. But was it worth the risk? No, no, um, because it could have been pr- really problematic. Even though I felt comfortable, I might have also been saying it, not really meaning it. Now I, I feel that I'm not that guy, but we do 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 that. Eh, we do definitely see that a lot when when uh, when someone is just kind of like, fine, do that thing that you're asking. You know, I'm just going to hold it in myself, and then it ends up you know bubbling inside, and that's mm-hmm. that's the worst thing that right. can happen. But yes. People change, people change all the time and they evolve. It's always funny when we see a new couple and they're, you know, they they have 50 rules and they're like, oh, and no kissing because mm. kissing, ah! is too, kissing is too close. <laughs> There's too much of the L word possible, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's usually gone after the first day. Like they're like, oh, kissing is just a part of sex. It's not that it. big of a deal. I've got I, my number one pet peeve as a unicorn is the fucking rules. I, if I come up against a couple who says to me, no kissing. I'm going to look at them and say, so I'm allowed to put his dick in my mouth, but I'm not allowed to kiss him. Goodbye. Yeah. Like, I, that red tape, 
drawn around someone's body. I just think that's not a relaxing experience. I don't want to feel like, oh, I've touched the third rail. Somebody's going to get in trouble. No, that's not sex to me. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, and those, and like I said, I mean, that one usually falls falls by the wayside pretty darn quick. But some people have rules that uh, that they just change over time, and it's fine. It's fine. It's no big deal as long as they're happy. But as you know, as a unicorn, every couple that you meet has different rules. They just have a different setup in their life. Uh, and, it's, and it's just, you know, just working your way through them and keeping the other person happy. But keeping you more than more important than anything is keeping you both happy as a couple, because that's what it's about. It's about enhancing our life and our sex life. It's not about replacing anything. Right. Guarding your relationship. Mm -hmm. That's so important. That's number one. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so you said your, your rules have changed along the years. Can you give me a summary of what your what, what would you consider your active rules today if you were to go to a, oh, a boy? Uh, a rule. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> um, I mean, the thing really is we just will talk about things before and because because we have kind of done the done the gamut of everything that like it does change it does change like there there will be times like we've played separately many many times and that's a good example where that is a rule that goes up and down and up and down and up and down mm -hmm. uh we were just at a big party a big takeover uh just this last weekend and uh it was one of those situations where yeah it was great having an orgy but did she feel comfortable with me going off with someone else without her there and sometimes she does and sometimes she doesn't and, and, and i'm the exact same way where it's just kind of like you know it just depends on who's in the room uh bianca considers herself very shy which <laughs> whether that's true or not it remains to be seen uh <laughs> but but she's not someone who will instigate sex for example so if, if we're you know a group of us go into a room for an orgy she might feel like she needs to stay in the corner until somebody literally grabs her hand and says you want to play and she's like okay yes i do um uh and if she doesn't do that then she's going to feel bad or feel like you know I'm, I'm not pretty enough or all all the things that people men women will always feel and and so uh because of that like she might say to me i don't feel comfortable with either this group of people or i don't feel comfortable if you just disappeared off somewhere else um uh, where another week she's like go fuck do whatever you want i'm ready to go i'm you know and, and, it, and it and it changes it changes. So. For me, it varies. It depends on who is in the room and how well do I know them or at least some of the people. Am I comfortable? Like one time we were at um, our, our club and he was hitting it off with a single woman um, and I was just sitting around talking to our group of friends and he came up and asked, you know, hey, would it be okay if I went to the back with her? And because I was there with all of our friends, I didn't feel like I was left behind or anything. Had they all gotten up to leave and I was sitting there by myself, I probably would have been a little upset. Um, that's been our biggest problem. If we, if we could say we have a problem is figuring out timing, mm -hmm. you know, how mm -hmm. long you should, or, you know, be in the back with someone or be with someone and when you don't know, when your spouse isn't right there and you don't know where they are, how they're doing, and are they sitting their board now and, and that kind of stuff. So that's something we're actively working on. But um, yeah, I mean, and that time it ended up totally fine. I ended up going with all of our friends back for an orgy. So. Yeah, which is what I figured oh. would happen. I was like, oh, they're just in a few minutes. They're going to they're gonna be right behind us and have a big orgy. And when I'm done with this unicorn, I'll go and join that as well. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. yeah. It was a win-win for everybody. <laughs> Well, I got to say, when, when you're a couple in the lifestyle that your problems this time is like, well, I'm bored while my husband's fucking a bunch of people. That's a great problem to have. Some people are figuring, trying to figure out, you know, what's it going to be like? How do you put a dick in someone else when your wife's watching? Like, they're so new. They're still having all those first insecurities. So it's great to see how far you can get to comfort and just figuring out the quirks as you go and, and constantly ironing it out. Well, sure. this, this weekend when we were away, um, we were all in a pretty large orgy. And at one point I was like, I'm hungry. It's snack time. <laughs> I let, I just, I let him know, Hey, I'm going to leave and I'll come back in a little bit. I needed some water. And I just, I, sometimes I just need, I get overwhelmed and I just need a minute. And yeah. I went to go eat, eat a snack and I went back to our room to eat it. And then I was like, yeah, I don't feel like going back. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. and he knew where I was and we were okay with that that separation. So. Right. And, and, but doing this for so long, I mean, we, we, we now we've, so we started out with the channel, you know, years ago, like 10, 11 years ago when we first got into this. And it just kind of gave the idea of like our, our journey. And then we started, we connected with Club Sapphire, who was, who was the switcheroo on this channel here. Uh, and, uh, and they're, they're a club in Seattle and uh, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're a massive club that's there. Uh, and then we, and then just the, about a, oh gosh, a couple of years ago now, we've like started a third channel, which is called the Traveling Swingers, which is basically about us 
traveling all over the world and doing doing big lifestyle trips and, and stuff like that. Wow, really? Is there anything you want to provide that's kind of burning that you would want to provide as like a last part for my interview? So the Channel Club Sapphire, which is the one that here, is uh, is where we've basically just kind of done like hundreds of videos. We have something like 150 videos of everything having to do with the lifestyle. So if someone's new to lifestyle or if they've been doing this for years, there's something that talks about, you know, how to pick up a unicorn, uh, which is probably what we're going to talk about on uh, our channel with interviewing you, uh, yeah. or how to deal with jealousy, or how to deal with watching your spouse have sex with someone else, or what to wear to a club, uh, what not to wear to a club, how to act around single people, how to act around other couples, how to pick up another couple, on and on and on and on. I mean, we, we have a lot of videos. So if, if your viewers are interested in just learning every aspect from the couple's perspective, then definitely check out Club Sapphire. Awesome. Well, I'll be putting a link in this video. I hope you subscribe to both. And if you want to continue to watch the rest of this interview where I'm going to be giving all my unicorn tips and tricks, you're going to have to come to Club Sapphire and see the rest of the video.